Let me first get to the new strategic framework that you announced about a month ago. Does that include as growth more M&A? So your last M&A deal was Synthorx. What's next in terms of M&A? Well, thank you very much for, uh, for having me today. I mean, it's a very exciting time in Sanofi right now. You know, with the uh, new leadership of Paul Hudson, we are ready to play to win, and uh, we are going to make a difference with past performance. We have, you know, growth and margin expansion, and we need to deliver on both, and that's what we are looking at in the plan we have just presented uh, at the beginning of December. And that's a great moment for the company. Are you purely focused on organic growth then, though, or are you still looking for more bolt-ons, more strategic opportunities for M&A? Well, that's a great point, because in our three main growth drivers, uh, of course, we have Dupixent, I mean, this great drug which is uh, expanding across uh, several indications. We have vaccines, which is growing, and it's that's sheer internal growth. But we also have our pipeline. And effectively, we are relying on internal development of this pipeline, which doesn't prevent us to try to enrich it and augment its valuation through acquisition. We just are, as we speak, in a process of uh, closing an operation in San Francisco Bay with uh, Cintorex. Uh, and that's a great example because it's all about science. And when we do M&A, it's really that we are going for science early science to create as much value as we can for shareholders. Jean-Baptiste, when does the market catch up with what you're doing at Sanofi and the, the new plans that you're putting in place? JP Morgan just upgraded your stock because they think it still trades at a discount to the rest of the sector that it shouldn't. Um, the, the upgrade basically says Sanofi trades on 12.6 times, Novartis trades uh, are on 14.3 times, i.e. you are at a discount to your peer group. How are you going to convince the market at the conference you're at now, at the JP Morgan conference, that you should trade on similar multiples to your peer group? Yeah, well, that's a great point because effectively we, we do trade at a discount. And uh, you know what? We have already proof points that we were able to, uh, to show uh, to the market in Q3. Of course, we, we, we will uh, go on giving proof points on how we execute, because now it's all about execution. But I think the timeline should not be too long to get a full recognition of what we are doing in Sanofi right now. I mean, the track record uh, of Paul Hudson is great. And you have to realize that in Sanofi, we have everything we need to, uh, to deliver success, uh, and we have time also. You know, next LOE is not before 2023, so we can really focus on developing internal growth acquisitions to build a great, great company. Uh, that's what we will be doing. So, timeline, okay. it will be uh, uh, qu quarter after quarter, we will deliver. As you say, Depixent is a is a big part of what you're doing. This is a, a, an allergy therapy uh, that, that that a lot of uh, what you're going to do next is is based on. We've just seen Eli Lilly make an acquisition in this space as well. Demira was the acquisition that it made just a few days back. It's got therapies in similar sort of areas uh, that Depixent operates in. Do you think it's going to be harder? What kind of com competition do you think you're going to get from Lilly? Well, yes, that's, uh, that's uh, hot news. And uh, you see, uh, Damira was not hot news. It was around for quite a while. And uh, IL-13 alone is not really matching what we can see with Dupixent, huh, with IL-13 and IL-4. So really, we are happy to see that there are growing interest in the, uh, in the area of uh, atopic dermatitis. But as you know, Dupixent is a whole range of indications, all through asthma, nasal polyposis, and many other indications we are working on. So the comorbidities, the absolute high level of uh, uh, security we have as a product, you know, very low toxicity, is pretty unique. So we know we have jacks coming, we know that we have this operation on Demira, but we are very confident that we are ahead 
on, uh, we will be leading the pack on, uh, on, this, uh, on those indications. You mentioned Paul Hudson's leadership as new CEO, Jean-Baptiste, and indeed he has made a mark already by basically putting the consumer unit as a, a standalone business. Should we expect that to be spun off at some point? Well, the, the choice is very clear, and we've been very uh, outspoken about it. It's, uh, we have, with our CHC business, a great business, a high-margin business, a high cash flow generative business. And what we want to do is bring it back to growth. So that's our first priority concerning CHC. And then we have, when we will be in the second part of our plan, two huge opportunities, which are two very important switches, one on Cialis and the other one on Tamiflu. And we are working hard on those two switches, which could unleash another billion of, uh, of uh, sales on top of, uh, of the growth uh, we are looking at. So we didn't think further than that so far. Uh, and, uh, it's quite a very exciting perspective to deliver on, uh, on those actions, growth on switches. That's what we are looking at for CHC right now. You have announced an aim of a 30% operating margin by, I believe, 2022. But analysts are suggesting that that could be beatable. What are your hopes for beating that 30% margin? Well, let's... Let's deliver it before beating it. But of course, the spirit is a spirit of a competitive team. And uh, we are looking uh, at uh, as a max performance we can deliver. Um, you know, we, we are looking, of course, at those growth drivers I just mentioned before, yeah. but also to deliver on a significant saving plan. We've committed to, uh, to deliver on a 2 billion euro saving plan. And we think we can execute on that. And we have already started in 2019, which was a... Uh, uh, at the end of the third quarter, uh, negative growth of OPEX, which was a bit of a, of a new thing in Sanofi. And we, we know that we can, at the same time, deliver the growth on the margin expansion because we will be able to monitor uh, what we let trickle down to the bottom line of the PL as savings or reinvest it into the growth engines of the company. So, yes, we are, we are very confident that we can hit those targets that we've set up for ourselves.